Hi, I'm Ross Mayfield, Investment Strategy Analyst at Baird, and we are back for another weekly update with our friends at Strategus. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by technical strategist Todd Sohn to talk all things markets. Todd, how are you doing this morning? Hey, Ross, I'm great, and always a pleasure to speak with you. Same here. Uh, thrilled to talk to you. And let's start 30,000 foot view. We're a little over three months off of the October lows, um, sitting at more than a 10% rally right now, though with some volatility along the way. And you know, I'm curious, what, what do you make of this rally? Is it another bear market rally? Is there something that looks sustainable under the surface? What, what are you seeing when you break down the tape? That's a great question. I, I, I boil that down to two main components. Number one, we, we still haven't really seen the thrust from the new high data that is typically accompanied off of major lows. That's the one thing I think we really need to see to get us out of this big range we've spent the last few months in. Look for the percentage of stocks trading above a three-month high to get towards the 50 to 60%. We've, we've barely exceeded, say, 20 to 30 over the last uh, few weeks. But that being said, it is interesting to us that the equal weight S&P 500 has flipped to positive in the, our trend model that we use here, while the cap weight is still negative. And that reflects the strength coming from more less influential sectors such as industrials, some improvement from discretionary materials, whereas the cap weight construction is still burdened by the t mega cap tech names, some from communications and some of those larger heavyweights within the consumer discretionary. So I, I think the story remains the same as much as the calendars change that you want to continue to favor the equal weight or the average stock over the cap weight construction, uh, especially for as long as we continue to trade in this very choppy environment. So, you know, in a choppy environment, in an environment where the, the macroeconomic data is kind of mixed and the market is sending mixed signals, it would seem that picking your spots becomes a little bit more important. And so, you know, maybe on a, using a sector framework, what, what are some sectors you all like? What are some that are weakening, by your opinion? Wh where are you all allocating money in that realm? Yeah, and I think what stands out from the weakening standpoint, uh, consumer staples a month ago were a top three sector in our rankings. Uh, they've dropped to seventh today. There's been some notable deterioration going on there. And what's curious is that's allowed our discretionary versus staples ratio to improve. That's our favorite risk barometer, our favorite economist that we call it, uh, outside of Don Rissmiller. Um, but what is odd is that you typically see discretionary outperform staples coming off of lows at the beginning of a cycle when they're both rising. What's odd here, though, is that discretionary is improving, but as staples are dropping. So we're not so sure what that message is there. Maybe some caution of safety is being sold. Now, as for other areas, uh, industrials, particularly the machinery space, remain a top rank group. Uh, and then within the financials, insurance and some of the capital market names have improved in our standings. Uh, the banks remain a little bit lethargic there. We still need to see some improvement. And then there's energy, um, still a top rank sector for us. I think a little bit lethargic after a great two-year run. Again, keep this in mind that it's rare to see a sector double its S&P weight within a two-year time frame. And typically the year following, there's a pause, but uh, energy trends still largely okay. I think if you're there, you can kind of sit there. Uh, and, and lastly, remember, staples dropping, utilities are still at the bottom of our ranks, and the REITs also in a lower tier. So still skewing towards the cyclical areas and away from defensive, but there's uh, a tenuous macro backdrop, I think, as you mentioned, that we want to be ma remain mindful of going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's a useful exercise um, in this kind of environment. And so I would love if we could do it again for U.S. versus international. And, you know, I think Strategus has exhibited a preference for international of late. I'd love for you to, you know, expand on that. But also within that realm, there's emerging markets versus developed markets. There's all sorts of different countries that could invest in. If you have any, you know, places that are looking a little more attractive than others, uh, I think that would be great to hear as well. Yeah, we've been so conditioned to buying and overweighting the U.S. and growth for the past decade. This is really the first time in ages that you have to actually look at where are there specific overweights to industrials, to materials and financials, as opposed to just looking for where growth is. And we continue to hone in on Europe. Um, what is really interesting to us is that since the U.S. dollar peaked back in September, uh, flows to European ETFs are very restrained. Uh, it seems to us that investors are seemingly ignoring the improvement that's going on there and great momentum. Uh, and Europe is very much overweight industrials, very much overweight financials and materials, the big bellwether miners. 
and a lack of tech. There is not much tech exposure there. That's allowed Europe to really take the front seat uh, in terms of relative leadership. I'd say the same for Canada. Canada is a heavy overweight to the energy and financial space. So if we're right on the idea that value and that interest rates are going to stay higher for longer, you want to look outside the U.S. where you're getting much less tech and growing long duration exposure. Um, take a look overseas. I'd say with EM, our issue with EM emerging markets is the overweight exposure to China. China is very much a boom and bust market. Um, navigating that can be extremely difficult. So I would play EM much more tight and active uh, as opposed to, say, going the passive route for Europe where the weights are all set there and the geographies are pretty straightforward. So uh, again, though, value over growth, international over developed is our house view. I think that's the way to continue to view this as the year progresses. Well, Todd, that's that's super insightful. I think a lot of great actionable um, items at the beginning of the year as, as folks revisit their asset allocations and sector allocations. I want to thank you so much for the time as always. It's been great to talk to you and, and hopefully we'll talk again soon. Same to you, Ross. Thanks a lot.